Hi, I'm Charlie Montatuiello with Blue Bear Flutes. Uh, of course, uh, our website, bluebearflutes.com, is probably the next thing you would think whenever I say Blue Bear Flutes. But don't forget about our Instagram, which has a great deal of wonderful pictures of places we've been and things we've done. Lots of different flutes that we've made. Sometimes you'll see Instagram posts of people who play our flutes or a number of things like that. Sometimes things that we share, but uh, a lot of really beautiful flute totems also. And for those of you who don't know what a totem is, it's usually what people call a little thing that's sitting on top of it. Sometimes it's an animal, sometimes it's a uh, whatever, and uh, we get lots of that. But anyway, uh, today's video is about something that I've had a lot of people ask me questions about over the years. People who basically just want to to know why something is like this or what's going on there. Is it a good idea? Should I have my flute like this? And what I'm talking about is the holes that are sometimes at the bottom of a flute. Now, I don't have it with me in hindsight. Maybe I should have brought it, but I didn't ask for permission, so I, I don't know if it was a good idea or not. But I do have a customer's flute that I did a repair job on. This flute, I don't know where she bought it from or who made it, but it's I guess probably around 20, 30 years old type time frame looking at it. And it has the sound hole, mouthpiece, fingerings like this, and it has one little tiny hole right here, um, just so far away from the bottom. It is a tuning hole in that particular flute's case. However, the flute was not in tune, so, you know, six of one and half a dozen of another. But, um, but anyway, the purpose of that hole was uh, presumably to make the flute in tune. A lot of people would say, well, I can play these holes, but I can't play these holes down here. And that's usually people who haven't seen these kind of fingerings uh, versus the sound holes down here at the bottom. And there's a lot of different things we can call these. Like I said, sound holes, tuning holes. Um, you'll find a lot of people, especially in online forums or at powwows, um, which have a lot of similarities these days, they'll call these four directions holes. And um, they claim that the four directions holes are to release the air to the different directions as it's being played. Now, historically, I guess in the last 50 years, probably the last 100 years, Native Americans have had a lot of new stories that have come up. A lot of these stories may or may not have any historical traction prior to when the stories came about. I feel like that's one of those stories. Um, I do know as a flute maker, and keep in mind here at Blue Bear Flutes, we have made millions of flutes. We have made a lot of flutes. But um, with that in mind, the purpose, I guess mechanically, if you want to say it, that were Oh, I hate to say scientifically because <laughs> that word's been used a lot lately. Um, but mechanically or aerodynamically, something that these holes actually do to the flute is it causes a like a reverberation. I mentioned this on a really old video that I have about my walking stick flutes that we make. And the walking stick flutes are usually about 52, 54 inches tall, and they have a lot of extra material, a lot of wood and them that is not there again mechanically serving a flute purpose it's not really you know you can cut it off and it still plays so um, but the thing is with the walking stick flute having all this extra resonant material in there really makes a big difference now with the river cane or bamboo ones we used to make they had large open areas which is really what I'm talking about the wooden ones that I make today still have a great deal of beautiful sound quality. Like if you take a E flute versus my E walking stick flute, you can hear the difference. I mean, I can hear the difference. Um, but the resonant of the wood, the wood kind of absorbs a lot of, uh, of different tense sounds, I guess you could say, because wood is a soft material. Um, whereas a hard material, like a hard wood, for example, or steel or copper or silver or whatever, you know, like a silver flute, for example, um, those things don't really absorb like a, a walnut flute, for example, or an oak flute, for example. Those types of woods don't absorb a lot of the sound vibrations. Most of it just passes right out of the flute. And even if you had one of those type of flutes, uh, adding a lengthier piece of wood at the bottom and putting these sound holes, these air escapes, so that the flute can be in tune there, um, 
that will cause it to have a better sound. It really will, because even though we're talking about a really dense material, having that longer bit of dense material makes a big difference. So I do have uh, one flute that I've played in a lot of videos, actually the one that's kind of, it's like the copy that most of our flutes come from today, which is a, um, it's a copy of a historical Cherokee Indian flute, and it's actually quite long, um, but it's the same tone, give or take, as this one right here, and it has a certain sound to it, and that sound has a certain appeal, and some people may and some people may not really like the sound quality, but historically it's kind of important. And it's the same thing with this one. This one, a lot of you are going, oh yeah, that sounds really great. Um, this flute has a different tonal quality than the same key flute. They're both in the key of A that is just cut off on the bottom. So being cut off right here, um, they're about, let's see, I'm going to line the sound holes up because that's where you start counting fingerings about the same place. And if you'll notice, these air escapes are about the same place that the end of the flute is on this other one. Uh, this is, of course, an older flute. It's about four or five years old compared to this guy here, which is only about a couple of weeks old. We made this in a video, actually a live stream, I think. Um, it's a flute kit that we made and uh, just one of our flute kits that I got back from a customer and I went ahead and finished it and turned out really beautiful. It's uh, my flute now. <laughs> I really love it. It's one of my favorites. As a matter of fact, I've mentioned to my wife a couple of times and before I come out and say it to the general public, I feel like it's probably the best flute I've ever made. Um, this is a key of A flute, once again cut off on the bottom. Really close to the sound, but a little different than this guy here. A lot of people will say, well, that flute sounds lower in tone, and it's not, of course. They're both tuned perfectly in the key of A at 440. Um, this one is just, it's got a lot more presence. It's got a lot more reverberation, like I say, that you can kind of tell that's coming out of there. and. In the past, we made more flutes like this, but today we don't as much because it's very time consuming getting everything tuned just right. And, and uh, there's variances that causes, you know, changes here or there. But uh, just basically to answer that age old question, why are there holes at the bottom of my flute? Those are air escapes. And it'd be just like cutting the flute off, except for someone left it the length that it was and put holes there for tuning purposes. Usually you enlarge the holes until the flute gets in tune and then the vibrations that travel through the flute, when all holes are covered, they escape out of these holes instead of straight out the end. Uh, so we basically shorten the flute by this much, but we left that, that uh, material on the bottom of it, which allowed the vibrations. Some of the vibrations do travel through to the bottom of the flute because if I covered this, you would hear a different sound. Um, but uh, like I say, what really counts comes out of those holes. It makes it play in tune. And uh, really makes a beautiful sounding instrument. So I hope that has answered the question for most of you. Why are there holes at the bottom of your flute? Some flute makers today still do that, which is fine. Some people carve uh, elaborate designs into the bottom of their flute to make it one way or the other, which is fine. Um, myself, I have made most of my flutes for the general public, ones that are cut off right there just for simplicity's sake, which is historically accountable as well as having the four directions holes at the end of your flute. <laughs> so anyway, you can uh, think about it in any, any way you like, but that's pretty much the gist of it and what makes a flute what it is. So I hope that you guys have found some use in this video. I hope it's answered that question for a lot of you. And if you have other questions, there's a good chance we've made a video about it. And of course, this one is on a subject I haven't covered before, but uh, we do have hundreds of other videos on making and playing Native American flutes. I would recommend checking out some of them if you can. And if you do have some questions, we always look forward to those as well. Once again, Charlie Montatuyela for Blue Bear Flutes and BlueBearFlutes.com. We make a lot of Native American flutes. We'll see you again really soon. Y'all take care.